Uh, looks like the Tusk or Chariots did indeed go live as they were uh, shown in early access, unfortunately, meaning that they are somewhat broken right now. This battle actually fought between myself and Samurai Warrior is going to showcase a little bit of how to counter these guys. I'm going to talk about the Razorgore Chariots and obviously the Wargore on the Razorgore as well a little bit here. Originally, I'd recorded this back before, actually didn't realize that they were broken, so I'm having to re-record this battle, but that's fine. We're going to keep it paused here for just a second as I go over the builds, as it is going to be pretty important. Kind of talking about my build here versus Samurai Warrior. For him, we've got Ungor Spearman Herd, a couple of Razorgore Chariots, a couple of Wargores on Chariots, Malagor flying in the air with double Manticore somewhere around here. Yep, here in the back, we've got some Harpies as well, uh, Centigores and Hounds over here, and some more in the corner over there for myself. A couple of Flagellants, uh, Warrior Priests, Sigmar Sons in the center, a bunch of Spearmen with shields, a couple of Empire Knights, Double Griffin, Boris, and the Amber Wizard both in the air, obviously with Manticore Summons as well, and we do have the Pistoliers here in Vanguard. So, coming back to the Tuscor Chariots, I mean, even without them being OP, they're still going to be quite strong. Good charge bonus, uh, fairly good armor piercing damage as well with anti-infantry, Vanguard of course, not as good at armor or HP or mass as the Razorgore Chariots, but they're going to be much more cost effective given that they're cheaper. Uh, the Wargore of course also being a character, single entity here. Again, a lot of similar traits, great charge bonus. The thing that's broken about them is that their splash attacks appear to be uh, applying their full weapon strength on all of their splash attack targets, and that is going to be quite dangerous, but here... In this battle, uh, one thing that you can do, and uh, sort of as this battle goes on, I can we'll talk about this. Really, the way I've found to counter these chariots, if you're going to run into them, you may have to play them. Tournament rule sets are going to be limiting them in tournaments, so you won't have to face too many. Um, I think uh, some discussions with Falcon about updating the banner rules. I believe we're going to be limiting character chariots to one, and I think maybe two, uh, like Tuscor or Razorgore chariots. I'm not sure, but anyway, Empire Knights charging in. We're able to kind of catch these Ungor Spearmen and break them pretty quick with some decisive terror routes. Likewise, this one Tuscor over here just eating Pistolier fire. Pistolier is, of course, still going to be... <laughs> Super strong unit in this matchup. Boris pulling away. He's got the Enfeebling Claw on him. Nice Penumbral Pendulum. Looks like, yep, from the, uh, what is that? From Malagor, I guess. Doesn't actually do all that much damage, but one of the Wargore chair, uh, sorry, Razorgores, pretty much done for. Boris is going to have to be careful. He's got a lot of single entities to try and fight in, but here in this infantry fight, uh, the Centigores and Hounds are going to get a really nice rear charge here. I'm able to somewhat maneuver these spears to kind of catch this rear charge, not allow it to fully land on the uh, squishy Tattersouls and Flagellants, which will trade very well into the Beastman Infantry. But for now, just trying to win this mobility fight again, sweeping these Empire Knights out to push these Hounds away. I want to make sure when these high charge uh, single entities drop down from the sky, I'm able to just get quick hits like this exactly with the Summon Manticore and the Amber Wizard in tandem, just a quick hit on this Wargore Chariot, and again, in this battle, I don't know that the Wargore Chariots are OP yet, this is literally the second battle we fought in the early access time period, but given that things essentially went live, other than the Wargore cost, I actually don't know if this build would work, because they did change the cost of the Wargore, I believe, on the Chariot, maybe not, we'll have to look, but uh, at this point, the Amber Wizard's going to get in deep trouble as a Summon Manticore, uh, or sorry, the two regular Manticores brought by the Beastmen come in, just do quick attacks on him. He's going to get chased back up in the sky. The Pistoliers are now going to have to come screen, and this is a very dangerous position for me. Uh, Boris, honestly, is getting a little bit lucky here, but one thing about Boris in this specific situation, again, the high charge single entity is nice uh, flying specifically so that you can very much dictate the engagements. Beastmen, even with the Manticores, still don't have that strong of a flying force. Um, but more importantly, the White Cloak of Ulrich and the other debuff, the Crush the Weak here from Boris, if I can get his uh, card to come back here. <laughs> crush the Weak, giving minus 5 melee attack, melee defense, and then an additional minus 10 melee attack from the White Cloak of Ulrich, minus 15 melee attack in total means that once the charge bonus wears off, these Wargores actually will fail most of their attack rolls, given they only have 27 uh, melee attack versus Boris, 40 melee defense with hold the line active. He's not actually going to be taking too many, uh, you know, OP splash hits from them. Same thing with the Manticores, right? Their attack somewhat debuffed. Malagor, though, proving his worth, flying in the air, just beating the crap out of this Amber Wizard. Uh, Amber Wizard, very sad about the new change. Going to get chased off by the Harpies, which is not great for me, but Pistoliers now... Uh, 
utilizing the protection of the Empire Knights. Again, Empire Knights sweeping away the Hounds. The Pistoliers are going to be very key for me, so I'm trying my best to protect them. Infantry fight, despite the kind of flank attack there, uh, the mobile box formation does win out, and the buffs from the Warrior Priest, again, also going to be being also going to be key in this single entity engagement, but this is not a fight I want up in the air, so I'm going to actually drop down on the ground on top of the Wargore, another Tuskor Chariot also in here as well, and I'm actually kind of surprised that my Empire Knights aren't taking more damage from the splash attacks here. I'm mostly just using them as a blocking force, and, and they do have Shield of Faith currently active, and it doesn't look like the Chariots are actually doing too many splash attacks, like the Wargore gets one there. Nice block of doom hitting a whole bunch of units all at once here, but I'm going to keep the flags off so we can kind of watch the animations of the chariots here as the uh, Empire Knights. They are going to be taking damage, definitely. You can see over time they are kind of getting worn down, but at the very least they're allowing Boris to get 1v1 engagements for the most part, which is pretty important. But now Boris is very low. Things are looking a little bit dicey for me. Got to be careful about using him, uh, you know, making sure he's still getting enough healing to not route and the Pistolier is still quite a bit of ammo as well, so we're going to use them both in range and melee. A little bit of a nice charge there from the Centigors and the Warhounds once again going after the Pistoliers. But Boris drops a quick hit on the Wargore once again, and this one should be shattered. Does look like not quite under 300 HP though. And again, the, the Manticores come in, they get a little bit ca caught up on cavalry. Nice clutch volley from the Pistoliers actually enrages that Feral Manticore, so that's exactly what I need. Uh, you know, preferably both of them enraged, but the few Empire Knights that do remain, again, screening here, screening action of the cavalry going to be very important, and the infantry as well, still quite a few spearmen, flagellants, unbreakable Sigmar sons to help support Boris, again, just cycle charging very aggressively on these single entities now, turning on the Manticore, the Samurai Warrior responds very well, kind of charging in with his Wargore, and with the Feral Manticore, again, decent RNG for me, I have to say, I'm getting a little bit lucky and not taking too many hits, Certainly, Boris's debuffs do play a key part in that. The, uh, the Warrior Priest, also on foot, does manage to get in here and actually get a couple of attacks on the Wargore, helping to route him. Also drops that Grand Soulfire, but a big tear route for me from that Manticore dropping. Uh, the Pistoliers are gone. You know, everything that's not a holy follower of Sigmar, I guess, plus these Spearmen is gone. <laughs> Flagellants, this Warrior Priest holding out Sigmar Sons themselves. Um, and, of course, the Spearmen. But at this point, both these Tuscor Chariots, I mean, one model there, still three models there, but very low on HP, very low on leadership. Still going to be, again, only 13 melee attacks, still 64 charge. So with that charge bonus active, they'll get hits. But once that charge bonus wears off, Boris will be able to uh, kind of smash them into oblivion. Bo uh, balance power still not great in my favor. There is this Manticore still more about half HP, maybe a little under half HP. Um... Another flock of doom also from the crow father as he flies in and out of here. Just absolute menace. Got a handful of bullets on these pistoliers trying to take him down. You can see him and the manticore both chasing Boris as I swing out. This wargore did rally. Other one here, 500 HP. Boris again, just one or two attack animations when they're this low and it should be all she wrote. Yeah, nice attack there. Goes under, not quite under 100, but close to 100 there. <laughs> Now Boris make his final stand. One last screening action from the Pistoliers. Nice rear charge onto this Manticore here. Boris turns around to take the engagement right in the face. Malagor drops down, but he's going to immediately get terror routed. And there's army losses. So it ends up being quite a close game. Very well played to Samurai Warrior there. And I, you know, I, like I said, I actually didn't even realize the Wargors were broken because I was able to manage them fairly well in this game. And I do think that has a lot to do with the build and tactics I was using. Um, and Samurai Warrior also kind of getting them a little bit spread out could have played into that as well but really from my perspective like shooting them is obviously the best option so you don't have to fight them in melee um and then the high charge terror causing single entities flying i'm in that's very specific group right basically it's just griffins more or less um some dragons i guess potentially you could also consider in that category but dragons are a little bit tougher to use they're bigger hitbox once they get on the ground they're tougher to get back up in the air because griffins relatively small uh in comparison they can slip through uh, but still screening with cavalry 
and shooting, you know, just kind of that play style I think does benefit quite a bit. Also the fact that I was able to win the infantry fight pretty decisively, you no know, samurai war. E the, the chariots ended up kind of being limited somewhat early on by the pistolier shooting and the terror, right? So they didn't contribute that much to the infantry fight, therefore the Sigmar Sun's flagellants were able to win out. Spearman with shields also contributing quite well against the uh, the Hounds and the Centaurs and whatnot. Empire Knights also doing quite well, I have to say. I didn't realize, but it looks like Heavy Cavalry also got a little bit of mass buffs. And Empire Knights coming close to paying for themselves is actually a very good performance from them. This is, you know, probably still a matchup where they can perform well. If they come up against with Centaurs, come up against Centaurs with great weapons, they will struggle. That is a direct counter. But as support in a style like this against these chariots and other units does seem like they did quite well. And obviously Pistoliers with the hard carry, uh, all very cost effective for the most part. So uh, yeah, credit to Samurai Warrior here on his side. Uh, Manticore is both generating some really nice value. The Wargore is actually, one of them did, I mean more than double its, its value here. The other one though I was able to limit. Tuscore Chariots also, this is probably one of the worst games I've seen from them value wise. Uh, if you can manage them, I mean, they're somewhat squishy. Yes, they will do a lot of damage. Their mass can be somewhat oppressive, but if you can deal burst damage to them, and that's kind of the point, I guess, with the shooting and with the high charge, you know, terror single entities. Burst damage plus terror is the best way to get rid of them, and they are somewhat susceptible to certain types of burst damage. Uh, the Hounds also had a little bit of a rough time, but uh, anyway, I do have one more game to show you, so let's get to that. I'm here again, this time I'm playing the Beastman, I'm up against Hadriz Tomb Kings, and we talked about ranged burst damage. That is one way of dealing with these chariots. This time I've got four of the Tuscor chariots. Again, this is probably not going to be legal under tournament rules, but this was just a test game to try and get a feel for where they're at. I only have one character chariot, Bray Shaman Lore of Shadows on Tuscor. Got a Wargore on foot. I did want to mention here, kind of highlighting the Wargore, he's going to be... Um, a little bit hated because of the chariot bugs, but even on foot, and once the chariots get fixed, he's still going to be quite a solid character. Anti-infantry of 20 on foot, 55 attack, 40 defense, decent charge, 80 armor, and a silver shield. I think the only shielded uh, beastman character, also very cheap. Probably one of the best melee characters to just take on foot. Also got Torox, uh, Jabber Slythe, whole bunch of Ungor spearmen again, a couple of Centagores. Again, the Ushapti Great Bows, four Hadris, got a couple of Tomb Scorpions, a bunch of Skeleton Spears, Skeleton Horse Archers, a couple of Carrion as well. And uh, the Focus Fire from the Ushapti Great Bows, first damage, is always r already routed one of those Tuscor Chariots. Uh, they're now going to turn their attention to the Bray Shaman Lord of Shadows and start to limit him. Thing is, I have a lot of targets for those Ushapti to try and shoot. There's also, obviously, Torox and the Jabber Slife that are currently taking none of the damage from this. So, Spear Leech from Arcan, just heavy focus from the Ushapti Great Bows, tons of damage. The Bray Shaman's already not doing great in terms of leadership. The Tuscor Chariots honestly don't have much by the way of ammunition. He is going to drop one Penumbral Pendulum just to try and get some value before he gets completely canned. Um, but yeah, already not feeling great about that. I do kind of pull my chariots back and now I'm going to advance them with the cover of the Centagore. Centagore is mostly just here to eat, quickly smash the carrion if they decide to try and get involved. But uh, meanwhile, just patiently enveloping here with the Ungor Spearmen. They will trade very well in the Skeleton Spearmen. Kind of typically wet noodle trade for spears to fight spears, but 25 attacks definitely okay for Spearmen unit. Both the Tomb Scorpions also come forward. They're going to quick tear out this Ungor Raider, or sorry, Ungor Spearman. But uh, the Chariots cometh, and unfortunately this Skeleton Spear at the last minute kind of starts to move on a movement order. I think it might have gotten an attack order actually, or something, but we do just immediately path through that. We're going to come in and surround the uh, Scorpions there. I'll keep the health bars up so you can see as... Uh, with the Wargore and Torox also advanced. Torox currently being focused by the Shopi Gravos, which obviously he's the most high value target on the field. That definitely makes sense. Uh, you can see, uh, what is that, Soul Blight going down here to tear away some of the armor of the Tuscor Chariots, also reduce their damage dealt. Uh, they actually do take quite a bit of damage there in that engagement. Uh, one of them obviously had from the shop to great bows, but still, they're also not doing too much damage right now, but Hadris is having to focus a lot of resources on taking them out. A lot of the spears here, both the tomb scorpions. What that means is not 
as much as allocated to my other power units here. Obviously the Jabber Slife, Torox, the Wargore. Wargore coming through. Oh, the Jabber Slife just body slamming these Shopty Great Bows as well as Torox just finishes one solo out there. So far looking decent for me, but at the same time, Hatteras is doing his best and actually doing reasonably well at managing these Tuscor Chariots. Another Pendulum for me. Uh, Bray Shaman did come back. Less than 700 HP, but still chilling for the time being. Horse Archers might peel and try and take him out. Shopti Summon also going to be used to pin uh, Torox in place, more or less. He'll fight through Shopti just fine. That will be able to at least keep him tied down for some time. Uh, Ark in the Black also enfeebling foe on him as he runs from the Jabber Slave. <laughs> Thankfully, he'll just get punted around by it. It's not going to take too much damage in melee. But uh, the Chariots actually haven't done too much in melee uh, damage if we were to pull their values. They probably haven't even paid for themselves. More importantly, what they're doing here, and this is something that they will be able to do very well even after, you know, the, the collision, or uh, sorry, splash attack bug gets fixed. They still will be able to screen very effectively, and right now they're acting as a great high mass screen for Torox, taking another Spirit Leech, but also allowing him to not get fully surrounded here by the Scorpions. You know, their Skeleton Spears as well. It's honestly just a big old mess of stuff. <laughs> And another thing I think why the chariots are actually good, you can see them almost like clipping into each other um, because they're not as wide now, like their collision model doesn't seem as wide. They can basically force path on top of each other, which I think is potentially another issue. But Torox, very nice dodge roll there, actually gets him straight out of trouble. So I can run him away. The two scorpions, although they don't have the greatest stats in the world, in a kind of sustained grind like this, it can contribute the extra terror and armor piercing damage to the chariots again having to disengage a couple of them have lost some models but mostly we've still got enough to effectively screen here this last two shot to great bow is going to go down Orox gets through very low on hp brass body is still on cooldown almost off cooldown he gets rear charged actually knocked over by the tomb scorpion is wavering wavering got some Ungor Spearmen coming in, but again, the Chariot's just screaming at this point. Really not even doing all that much damage. You'll see that in the, in the end screen, but Brass Body finally gets popped at a clutch time, up to 71 melee defense, damage resistance as well. Pops that explosion. Even still, I feel like Torox is in mortal danger, but uh, just surrounding, making sure those Shopty Great Bows can't fire. Necrotect as well. Fighting in there. Uh, my Wargore, though, and the, and the Jabber Slith have just been fighting, kind of grinding everything else down over here. And while the Tomb Kings are making an admirable push to finish off pocket of my power units here, you can see the Tuscor Chariots actually do get terrified. Torox, now with Brass Body about to drop here, may start taking some damage and actually go down, but everything else is just so low. Yeah, he does take some hits there. Oof. Still returning fire. Oh man, does actually go down. Rope gets snipped by the uh, the Tomb Scorpion there, but it proves too much for the Tomb Kings. Tomb Scorpion's actually crumbling. Ushanti Great Bows are crumbling. The Necrotech's crumbling. Arcan is getting finished off by the Hungry Jabber Slife and the Wargore. Wargore giving him a menacing gaze. <laughs> and Arcan just dies to the fart of the Jabber Slife. What, a, what an end for for him. Ends up actually being pretty close, and credit to Hadris for playing that very well. Um, did manage the Chariots, as I mentioned. Not really, I mean, a couple of them do pay for themselves, a couple of them don't. So, considering how quote-unquote OP they are, potentially pretty good performance. Also limits the Bray Shaman quite well. So the Ushopti Great Bows kind of showing their value in that. And obviously, like I said, several times in this video, shooting these Chariots is one of the best ways of dealing with them. Uh, Tomb Kings, unfortunately, don't have a lot of great melee burst damage, so once it comes to that melee combat, uh, and a lot of it's going to be like Constructs, which would be particularly vulnerable to these guys, uh, I, I have to think about it a little bit. And you don't really have any flying single entities at all, right? High charge anti-large single entities, like, I just don't know. Even the, the Necro Sphinx, I don't think, will beat these guys in, in this many numbers. Like, if I were to blob up around the Necro Sphinx, probably beat it with the Chariots. It's hard to say. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. I do think Tomb Kings are in a little bit of a weird place in this patch, but 
Uh, netting and shooting might be also a good option because generally for these chariots to really work on the, with you know with the super OP behavior against single entities they do kind of have to blob up so maybe an overcast net shooting in with the shop to great bows maybe even more to shop to great bows um, with uh, like just spell terror on Arcan honestly and maybe some more cavalry I don't know Hatters and I were kind of talking about it trying to brainstorm some different things. I do think this matchup got a lot tougher for the Tomb Kings, which <laughs> was arguably one of the few matchups that was good for them before, so Tomb Kings are in a little bit of a rough spot, but let's not talk too much about that. More focus on the Chariots and on the Wargore for today, so Wargore, you have to watch out, even on foot, it's still going to be a really nice character, and uh, yeah, the Chariots, just shoot them, smash them in melee if you can, if you can charge them and hit them hard and fast with burst damage, terror obviously. But, uh, yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments below on the new patch. If you've been struggling to deal with these guys, you've been having a lot of fun. Honestly, a lot of good, a lot of positive in this patch, so I don't want to get too hung up on this one kind of glaring issue. But it is a fairly glaring issue, so I thought I'd bring you this video to kind of help share my thoughts on the situation, show you guys a little bit on how to beat these guys. Uh, honestly, one way to beat them is just to avoid them, right? On ladder, you can obviously just try and find another game. In tournaments, like I've mentioned, they'll be limited in rule sets. And, you know, you can always ban Beastmen as well in a pick-and-ban system, so there's that. Hopefully it shouldn't be too oppressive, but uh, thanks again for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you like this sort of content, find it useful. Be sure to like, subscribe, share with a friend. Thank you all so much again. We'll see you next time.